Oh, raise your hands if it's difficult to paint water right here. But I'm going to help you learn to paint water just like this in a few short steps coming right up. Okay, everyone. So we are going to continue to work on our water techniques. Um, again, it's a really difficult technique because you're really looking at a lot of motion. So I highly recommend just really just going to see some water and taking a photo of it. Uh, this, this one we're actually going to start practicing with some different colors here. I've got black, blue, white, and green on my plate. And then I'm going to start with my larger size brush. I've got a 3 inch brush here and a 16 by 20 canvas. You're more than welcome to use whatever size canvas that you like, but I'm just showing you on this one so you can see visually a little bit better here. Well, let's go ahead and start making some color. Now I want to kind of darken this up here with this water. I want to add some blue on my large brush. And I want to darken this blue of quite a little bit here just to just to change it up. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of black on my brush and mix that into blue. And you're going to see it kind of dulls that blue out a little bit. It makes it a little bit darker. And we're actually mixing basic colors, okay? Plain blue, plain green. We got plain black and plain white here. And again, I'm just kind of getting that feel of what kind of blue I want to go after. I'm getting rid of a lot of that real bright blue right now. And the best way to kind of feel your color is to put it on your canvas. All right, so let's go back and forth, side to side here. You can even go up and down, whatever you'd like. And we want to cover this nice bit of canvas. Now you can see it's not that real bright electric blue that I had. It's dulled down with that black, which I want. I want to add this nice bit of different color on this water and just change it up. I'm scoop up more on my brush once I start running out and just switch it up a little bit. Now you can see I've got still some access to plain blue on my plate. You're more than welcome to paint your edges on your paintings. I leave that up to you if you want to do that. But by doing this up and down motion, side to side, back and forth, this actually helps this paint start to dry faster. Now this acrylic paint is already designed to dry pretty quick no matter what, but this just helps it along the way. Now you can see I'm just adding a little bit more of a lighter blue coming right up here. Now if I want to change it up, if I want to start adding a, like maybe a different color or even put like some of that black in there to make a little bit more of that blue, you can do that. Just play with it. Have fun with it. Each color is so different. I'm going to add a little bit of green on that brush, just a tiny bit you can see. And then I'm just going to mix it into that to see what it does. Have some fun with it. A little aqua marine it looks like it's coming out. Check it out what it comes out on your canvas. Yeah, that works. The best thing you could do is just really test stuff out. Give it a feel. There's so many different ways. We're gonna, we're gonna use different colors with the, our waters and learn how to do it. These of course are the ones we're using today. But what the big brush does is it helps cover a lot of this canvas really quickly. And what a pretty color that actually came out to be. Now my paint's kind of thinning out as I'm running out of that color, but that's okay. What it does is it works with me and it kind of lightens it up. You can see it's kind of got this nice light turquoise thing going. And as we progress higher and higher, it's kind of got this awesome light to it. You know, and just sometimes that's what you got to do is just go with the flow. I'm going to add a little bit more green into that blue. Let's, let's see what it does. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is a cool color. Again, I'm just testing colors. Showing that you can just mess around with it, see what happens. Okay, every painting is going to be always so different. If I were to try to paint this again or color match it, that'd be tough to do. So try not to overthink your paintings. Try not to overthink your colors. You just want to get a kind of a good feel for it. Look at that. 
What do you think? That's a pretty cool looking color. Now that paint, because we're doing that back and forth motion and side to side, that's already starting to really dry off. Okay, you can see I've got just a little bit of blue there. Um, you know, I've got just the, you know, I mixed those colors all together on the plate. You can see the green tinge in there. You can see the black. Try not to overthink it. Just kind of just bring in some color a little bit, you know, and you can see what a fantastic job it did. It created some kind of an aqua green right there. We've got the uh, blue and black mixed in together. And you can see it just has a nice, good coloring to it. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit more blue on my plate because I did run out very quickly. And now what I wanna do is start adding a ripple effect in this water. I've got the base color right now, but I wanna add some, like a nice ripple effect. Now I know how to make those colors already. We did it already, the first step. So what I wanna do is just make the ripples happen. We're gonna start with low lights first. So I'm gonna take some of that blue Remember how we made that original blue and black? I'm gonna make a darker version of that, okay? So I've got my pretty good sized brush. In fact, you know what? What I might do is even switch over, but you know, to a smaller size brush. But let's try it with a big brush here. Let's see what we can do with this guy. But it's a darker version. I've got a little bit more black inside that blue. Now I want my waves to kind of have a ripply effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and break this up. Oh, let's see, let's give this a whirl. Let's see what this does. I'm making my lumps of water. What I mean is I'm adding this shadow effect so I know where some of this water is actually gonna start making shape where it's gonna start actually, the wave is just basically a lump of water. And I've got that nice lump right there. In fact, I can even add another one. Now, just right down here in this corner. But it, what it did was it broke up that band. It broke up that, so you can see there's an obvious difference between the blue and the dark blue right down there. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just to change it up, I've got more on my brush. Let's do it again. Let's add maybe another ripple. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make it look like it's kind of coming at us. So I'm gonna make a little bit bigger on this end here and then taper it a little bit skinnier. Look at that. Okay, now with just a little bit of paint on your brush, you can just go back and forth and kind of just barely blend those edges into the blue. You look at, but you can see there's an obvious difference. You got the darker and you got the lighter and then you got the darker and that's where that ripple effect comes in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add, this one's gonna be starting to be a little bit skinnier now. I'm gonna make a little bit skinnier of a ripple here because we're now gonna start getting a little bit more of a perspective. Okay, and I can even add a little one right there. And by perspective, meaning these waves are starting to be a little bit further away, these ripples. Okay, again, I'm using a pretty big brush right now. I would say, you know, eventually at this point, the waves are starting to get smaller. I'm gonna switch over to my medium-sized brush. All right, I'm just using flat brushes here and I'm gonna switch right over. And I'm gonna start making these little smaller ripples. And that's another key too, is you really have to start getting a feel for your brushes. All right, start kind of using smaller, larger. Take your time on it though. But I'm adding these like nice little effects. You can see I'm just using the whatever little left paint that I have on my brush. Now we're starting to get into that greenish effect there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of green into this darker blue because I wanna keep that same idea going. We did the blue black, but now I wanna do maybe some of that 
aquamarine blue right up here. Just little ripple waves. Now water can really, you can spend a ton of time on working on the details. Again, we're just really trying to do it quick and get a good feel for, you know, just the basics on how to create some of these effects. But that's what you want to do, see? So you've got these nice little ripples right here. I know where the waves are coming in. They're a little bit larger down here. It's all about perspective now at that point. So what I want you to do is we're gonna go ahead and still maintain with this um, medium size brush here. And we're gonna keep on going. We're gonna add some more highlights now and create, it's really just about creating some reflection. Now how you do that is you're gonna take that same color that you made, that blue black. All right, I'm gonna start with that here, make some of that, a good amount, okay? You wanna make a good amount of that blue black and this is the uh, nice thing about using just these colors here is that you're only using all these but you're creating so much from them and that's what's so awesome and, and you have the ability to make all of these little hiccups mistakes um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of plain white on that brush and mix it into your blue black and now what you have is you have the ability to go ahead and start adding some of these awesome ripple effects breaking up some of that darker color and bringing it this is kind of a connection of bringing it into your lighter blue down below you can see I'm making these little ripples, these little dashes. They're kind of going diagonally because I'm just kind of going with how the movement of this water is going to be. So I'm making these ripples. It's kind of a fun step. This is going to take a while. So look at that, check that out. Now if you want to make low lights, all you do is you put a little bit of black on your brush and you start making some shadows. Starting up here at the top of that wave where it's starting to break. You're really just going back and forth. Look at that, you're breaking it up.
So you essentially can lighten it, you can darken it, however you want to do. But if you darken it, that means that water's getting a little bit darker. That's all that means. If you darken it, we're going a different color, different direction with their water. And I'm just changing the face of this whole painting. So you can kind of see there's like that ripple effect. You've got texture. Like check that out. That is awesome. I love that. And then what you want to do, you can also switch over to your small size brush and just add highlights. Okay. You can just add some highlights. I want to mix this up. Take a little bit brighter and make a brighter reflection. That's all I'm doing is taking the same colors and just making my own. Look at that. All right. Now, of course, you can take a paint knife, mix all those, but there's the fun in that, right here. Look at that. All it's doing now, you can see, as I'm going with some of those original dashes, but it's giving the illusion that it's picking up some light when you have that highlight on there. And it gives a little bit more depth to your wave. So you can see it's just, it's just a mind game, really. And just figuring how to break down some of this water here and just it's with color you just add layers and layers until you're figuring it out and you're getting the flow and the rhythm of it all okay this one look at that see that one came up a little bit no big deal whatever maybe it's just starting to get a little bit more wavy right there some of these little waves are coming up okay that's all you do is just Keep adding layers, add that texture, get a feel for your brush, but check that out. I love that movement. Now, of course, if you wanna add more highlights up there, you totally can, that's that's what it's there for. In fact, I am I know it's getting a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add maybe some, you know, just little squiggly lines here. Just make it look like some of those highlights are getting hit by some light up there. Show them some love too. Yeah, just little side to side squigglies, breaking up some of that original water, but you still want to see it. You know, if you want some light, put some green in there, man. Change it up. Make it aqua, light aqua. Once you start messing with your colors, that's gonna really help with your realism. And then you start figuring out your techniques and what works, what doesn't work. Here, I'm gonna just lighten this up over here. Look at it. This wasn't even light before. Now I'm making it light. Maybe the ref reflection of this water is different up here. It's okay. Just mess around with it. But I want you to get the, the just the the basics of like, you know, seeing your colors start to break down, you know, just all those little details. It's so strange, you know, I know it's tough. Water's one of the harder ones, especially like, cause it's just so fluid and moving. It's always moving, you know, especially if you're doing like a wave or, you know, any kind of just sitting in the pool, you're like, wow, look at all that just gleaming and glistening at you but we're gonna break this down. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you all the tricks of how to do these paintings here. And again, you can see I'm just taking whatever is left on my brush 
and just using it. It's just a little bit left. Look at that, see? And you are gonna make mistakes. I've made tons of mistakes already on this painting. I'm going with it. I'm just going with the flow. Nature is not perfect, and I'm gonna use that to our advantage here. I'm telling you guys. That's why you see a lot of artists do landscapes. Because you can mess up as long as you know the technique of how to get it back. You're like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. That's how they do it. All right, see, I got some bright spots there. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna change it up. Got little lumps of whatever's. Okay. Have fun with it, guys. And you could just keep going. <laughs> like, honestly, I could keep working on this all day. <laughs> all right, but I'm not. <laughs> we could keep going and going. I just, again, wanted to show you the basics of fluid, of movement, water, color, all that kind of stuff. But there are some basic waves there for you. Um, you could really get the detail details, but you know, we'll just we'll start with this for now. I want to see, you can see, Again, you've got your highlights, your lowlights, and your ripple effect, and that is what it's all about. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you soon on the next show. Brushing up with Sean. Bye-bye. All right, so I know painting water is a difficult thing to do. Remember, go take a picture of water. That helps get that still shot, all right? Then really break it down. Start with your base layer, the background color first, Start adding your highlights and your lowlights. Start using your brush any way you can. Just kind of get a feel for it. Mix your colors well. We are gonna make a few episodes on making water because it is a more difficult step, but I really appreciate you staying with me and keeping it going. Hope you're enjoying it. Make mistakes, all right? Don't worry about it. We're gonna make mistakes together. I'm gonna to show you that all water, all nature, all these things, Every painting is different. The point is have fun, learn something new, and just go for it, guys, all right? I believe in you. I know you can do it. Just keep up the good work. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care.